with a total of 14 games played in between these two teams, which goes by names of Watford and Arsenal. Watford has won two. Arsenal has won 12 in their view. Arsenal has managed to keep eight clean sheets and Watford has managed to keep zero clean sheets. That means each and every game they played against Arsenal in the Premier League, they've really gone ahead to concede a goal. 12 goals scored by Watford in these 14 encounters and Arsenal has scored 33 goals against the side which goes by the names of Watford. Welcome to Rokani Media Football. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? This is the Rokani Media Football. Smash the like button, comment and, and share. That applies to people that have been here and have been watching us for a very long time. And if at all you've, you are watching us for the very first time or you've always been watching us and you've not yet subscribed to our channel, endeavor to go into the lower right bottom corner click the subscription button then click the notification bell and click all that will enable you get notified each and every time we upload a video or schedule a stream onto this channel such that you don't miss out on the parties that are always here onto the rokani media football so we are broadcasting live from the african Kev studios and this is your man who goes by names of our radio rock and david in there so we are into this mega 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 big match of arsenal that really means a lot to a side which goes by names of arsenal we are really going to give you the predicted lineup of arsenal and you are really going to break down this team of arsenal as they talk on a side which goes by names of watford in there for you first in the news Arsenal has only one player that is doubtful who goes by names of Tomiyasu. He's still struggling with a, an ankle injury in there and the manager who goes by names of Mikel Ateita came out yesterday and said yeah Mikel yeah that Tomiyasu is not really going to be able to make it in this game he's doubtful in there for you but good news is that Emily Smith Rowe who missed out on the game against Wolverhampton Wanderers I think it was I think it was midweek I think it was Wednesday last week in there he is back into this game and is expected to play a very big role into this game of Arsenal as they play away at Watford in there Premier League, Arsenal is just how many points? Arsenal is just two points, two points behind Manchester United. And if at all Arsenal really goes ahead to win this encounter, they will be, they will be, Arsenal will be how many points ahead of Manchester United? Arsenal will be one point ahead of Manchester United with how many games in hand? With two games in hand. Because as the table stands, Arsenal has played 24 games. And Manchester United has played 27 in there for you. But remember, the games that Arsenal have in hand are so tricky in there for you. But we can't really come out and really talk about something that has not yet happened in there. So we just wait and see how Arsenal is going to react when it's playing its three games in hand. Remember, all its three games that Arsenal has in hand it's are against the big six. There is Liverpool, there is Chelsea and Tottenham Hotspur. So we don't know how Arsenal is really going to fare into that encounter of, of, of Liverpool, Chelsea and Tottenham Hotspur in there. But it really looks good for Arsenal because it's like they're really taking close to 10 days without playing a game of football and they come back to the pitch and they really do on and play very well in there. So that leads us into the predicted lineup of Arsenal immediately without further ado in here onto the Rokani media football in there for you and as you all know that Arsenal has really gotten one of the best goalkeepers in the prem in there who goes by names of Aaron Ramsdale and no one is really going to bench him no way you are benching Aaron Ramsdale in there for you Cedric Soares is expected to come through into the central into the right back position of this team in there then ben white and gabriel magales are expected to play into the central defense partnership as usual because it's very solid in there that defensive partnership of gabriel and a player who goes by the names of ben white in there when you look at the left full back in tn is going to start in there though i'm really feeling i'm really having a feeling that this time around it might be a nuno tavares to start because i really believe that nuno tavares came up into the game of wolverhampton wanderers for kian tn and played in very well then in the double midfield pivot we are having Grant Xhaka and Thomas Party. These two are really doing wonders for Arsenal in there. Especially Grant Xhaka when he's really having a good day. Forget all those red cards that he has got into the season. But when he is really onto the game, he's really that player that Arsenal wouldn't like to miss onto the pitch. And he plays very well alongside Thomas Party because when he's playing into that role, it allows Thomas Party to go on and do a lot of advances forward the farthest parts of the pitch in there that is Thomas Party in there for you so that double midfield pivot of 
Bantu Jack and Thomas Party is really solid in their form, and you just remember it went really went tough on a team which goes by the names of Man City. Hey, the Man City got a late winner in there to beat Arsenal by two goals to one in there. But I really believe that Arsenal are really going to play a 4 2 3 1, and that is the double midfield pivot of Arsenal in there. When you look at Cedric Soares, he comes in for a player who goes by the names of Tommy Yasu, who is really battling with an ankle injury for a very long time in there and i really believe that they won't really hurry him back because suarez the games that has played he has really proved that at least he can do a very good he can be a very good plaster on the wound in there into that position in there gabriel and ben white oh my god that's one of the best central defense partnership that i really admire into the premier league in there when you look at the central attack midfielder that is a man who is going to play into that position he goes by names of martin odegaard oh my god this norwegian man is really out of the world many people have not yet noticed what this guy does because however much he has really registered very many assists in there for arsenal but those secondary assists are so much you get the way he really passes out that ball his intelligence on the ball is something else martin odegaard you're just that player that needs to be on the pitch of Arsenal in there for you and I really tell people that that day he really gets an injury it's when you're really going to get to know the importance of this young man in there for you 23 years of age 23 years of age is the captain of Norway and I really believe that this season the best player of Arsenal goes by the names of Martin Odega don't forget that we can come out and say no it's not him it's it's Emily Smith Rowe it's Bukayo Saka because these ones are scoring goals but trust me Odegaard Odegaard is really one of the best players at Arsenal in there, if not the best in there. And I trust me, next season he might be he might be into a more position of really scoring more goals in there. And I really believe that he'll be doing wonders in there when he really adds more goals onto what he's doing at Arsenal. He's really going to be the best player at Arsenal in there. This was even evidenced by the manager who goes by names of Miguel Ateta when he was asked in that game in the post-match press conference after winning 2-1 against a side which goes by the names of Wolverhampton Wanderers in there. He really came out and said that everyone loves him at the club and they feel like he should be the next captain of Arsenal in there because he's doing that job at Norway very well and... Mikel Ateta acknowledged that and said, I even called, I even called the national team coach of Norway and asked him how, why did he really put this young man ahead of people that are really experienced onto the Norwegian national team to become the captain of a team which goes by the names of Norway. And he was really given good reasons for why this happened in there. So to me, I will feel like Odegaard might be the next Arsenal captain in there for you. Though others are saying Kian Tierney in there. And giving Kian Tierney the captaincy will be like tying him at Arsenal because real Madrid are looking at him as the potential replacement of Marcelo. You know Marcelo, he has been playing that left fullback for a very long time. That Brazilian and is playing, he's giving, he's giving Real Madrid his last dance in there and he feels like next season he's really going to be playing football elsewhere. 33 years of age and I really believe that if at all they really give it Kian Tierney, I really believe that it's going, it's all going to be about him tying him at Arsenal in there. But I really feel like Martin Odegaard is far much place to be into this position because he is doing it at bigger platforms in there, especially at the Norwegian national team in the field. But we expect him to play into that position and he is really playing in that very, very well in there. Emily Smith throw a returning and I really believe that he's really going to start ahead of Martinelli because of his touch that he's having into this game in there. I really believe that Martinelli is really a very good player. You get he's industrious in there, he's tenacious. He's very much skilled in there. He takes a lot of risks in there for you. But I really believe that in a game like Watford, you just need an Emily Smith throw who's really going to kill off the game immediately because he's so direct. He's the most direct player, I think, in the Premier League. When he gets the ball, he doesn't look forward. If at all you really want to know, there is that goal that Arsenal scored at against which side. That game that ended 1-0 before they played the side, which goes. Before Arsenal played the side, which goes by the names of Wolverhampton Wanderers, there is a game that they really played, and Emily Smith Rowe was onto the score sheet in there. Let me look for that game. It was against, I think it was against Brentford. Yeah, I think it was against Brentford in there when Emily Smith Rowe put them ahead. I really believe that that game was really tied, and guess what happened? Arsenal, Arsenal's Emily Smith Rowe went ahead to level it up, and no, it was not, it was not tied. It was Arsenal. It was 0-0, but Arsenal was not looking like I said that was going to score. And guess who really separated that game? It was Emily Smith Rowe who really came out and really took the ball to the defenders. He cut inside and he placed the ball into the lower right bottom corner and it went inside. So I really believe that 
in a game like Watford, in the game like that of Watford, one thing we have to do is to really get Emily Smith throw away onto the pitch. I really believe that Martinelli is more talented in there, but the directness of Emily Smith throw away is needed into this game in there. So I really believe that he's going to start against the side which goes by the names of Watford as a left attacking midfielder in their only forward. When you look at Bukayo Saka into the left into onto the right attacking side of the midfield, that is Bukayo Saka in there for you. I expect him to start onto that side of that side to play off that flank very well because he's trust me they can bench they can bench they can bench md smith Rowe, they can bench tomiyasu they can bench kian tieni but that we arsenal has got like five players that are untouchables aaron ramsdale gabriel ben white thomas Partey. Uh, and Bukayo Saka, those five players are really untouchable. Trust me, you can as well agree with me. They're untouchable, but Arsenal, they are really great, great players in there. And it looks like that is the spine of a team which goes by the names of Arsenal. So Bukayo Saka is a player who is an untouchable, and him being English really gives him another another privilege over these other players because when you are English in a team which goes by the names of Arsenal and you play in the Premier League, you really have a very good chance because even media will always come and fight your battles. You see that Manchester United. Harry Maguire is one of the worst defenders that United is having into their hierarchy because I really believe that even her, even Phil Jones is far much is placed far much better than him. But you hear how the English media comes out and defends him that United should play play a system that really favors him. Why? United is a team that should be attacking and not playing a deep line. You get? So if you want Harry Maguire to be safe. United has to be playing a deep line. Now, how are you going to attack when you are playing a deep line? You just have to go up and play a high line in there. So I really believe that English media plays so much into the starting of certain players in there. But Bukayo Saka has proved it against time that he is really a very good player. And I really believe that that's going to be the starting line of a team which goes by the names of Arsenal. I don't know who do you put in or out in there, but that conversation should go into the comment section below and you tell me who do you think should start and who do you think shouldn't start into this game of Arsenal as the token side which goes by the names of Watford in there. Let's go to the pitch directly. When I look at Arsenal, Obviously, they are really going to struggle to score goals. I know that because they are lacking a number nine. Because Lacazette is not that number nine who is really going to come up and really, and really be there waiting for that ball to come in through. Most of the times, the ball will be played into there and it won't find anyone there because Lacazette is is a mobile is a mobile number nine. He will chase the pitch all over. He will drop into the midfield. He will drop to the left flank to the right flank anywhere you'll find him dropping on each and every flank that is the man who goes by names of Lacazette there for you and I really believe that that is really costing a team which goes by names of Arsenal and that's why people like people like Piers Morgan will come out and their points will be valid of a Aubameyang coming out and really and really ashaming Ateta by scoring four goals in three games in there no there are five goals in four games that is a Aubameyang in there for you but I really came out and told people that I don't blame Ateta because Aubameyang had to go. I cannot, I cannot have, I cannot have a spoiled egg. I cannot have a spoiled tomato. And then put it into the good ones that are not yet spoiled. So it's better to take him off. So that's why I disagreed with Piers Morgan saying that he has been really he that he said that Aubameyang is doing mockery to Ateta because Mikel Ateta came out and really sent him out to Barcelona and he's really doing great in their non-scoring goals. I asked him why wasn't Aubameyang scoring goals at Arsenal? He wasn't. So why do you keep one of the strikers who is highly paid and cannot really be good on the pitch and even off the pitch is a discipline so he had to kick him out in there so i really believe that it's costing arsenal but i really believe that emily smith ray can really get this job done in there and arsenal should get a very good a very good a very good what um precedent from manchester united in there they were at old trafford they got a point in there and i really believe that watford is fired up but they got a point because united never really buried their chances that they got. They got very many chances and they failed to bury them in there. Something that I believe Arsenal won't fail to do. If Arsenal gets these chances, they'll bury them in there, but they're not going to be that much because I really believe that Watford is going to come with a very, 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 very intense game to Arsenal in there. So Arsenal should watch against Sa, Ismaili Sa, very dangerous and deadly Sissoko into that midfield they're really going to be having a very good brawl in between him and Thomas Partey watch onto that 
even there is another player known as Dennis the Nigerian. He's really he's really hold and very, 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 very good player in there who really plays into that midfield in there for you. There is Tom Clevery in there, in that midfield. There is Ben Festa, the goalkeeper. So I really believe that United have reached a level, sorry, Arsenal have reached a level of killing off such games, but it depends how they are really going to convert the chances they get. I know they aren't going to create very many chances in there because they're really going to be playing away at Watford, but I really believe that they can do the needful to get good points out of this game in there. So I don't know what your prediction is going to be. I really believe that Arsenal will go on and take away this game by two goals to one. That's my prediction in there for you. But nevertheless, anything in the game of football is possible in there. So leave your predictions into the comment section below. But as you know, when Arsenal wins this one, they are really going to be ahead of Manchester United by a point and they will be into the fourth position in there and Manchester United is playing against Man City on Sunday a game that we expect Man City to beat Manchester United but mind you have you known that in the last nine games that United has played at Etihad they've managed to beat Man City like three times so it's really not it's not a game that you're really going to come out and really give a prediction so Arsenal won't risk their day and this is the most clear chance that Arsenal has to be into the top four positions in there for you win this one win like one game that you have in hand like against Spurs you beat Spurs that means you'll be four points ahead of Manchester United go ahead and draw against a team which goes by names of Chelsea that means you'll be five points ahead of Manchester United and even if you lose to Liverpool that means you'll be already be five points ahead of Manchester United and remember Arsenal is really going to host Manchester United at the Emirates so Arsenal has the entire chance they just have to win this game against Watford be a point ahead of Manchester United they, they displace them from that fourth spot of the Premier League then Arsenal we we'll just have to wait the result between Manchester United and the team which goes by names of Man City at Etihad on Sunday. Then Arsenal, maybe in the midweek, they can really go in and play some good games. If at all they win against Spurs, then they'll be like four points ahead of Manchester United. Even if they lose against Liverpool and Chelsea, but just know they have to host Manchester United at the Emirates. So if at all they beat United at the Emirates, Arsenal would have gotten themselves a very big chance to go into the fourth place of the Premier League. Hence, going into the Premier League in there. So that's what I had for you here on the Rokani Media Football. Smash the like button, comment and share. This is what we do here on a daily. And if at all you've not been watching us on a daily, you are missing out because we really bring out content that you guys have not yet heard about. I don't know what you guys think about this Watford versus Arsenal Premier League game season 2021-2022 that is happening at... Watford in there, Arsenal is going to play away at Watford. Smash the like button, comment and share. I go by the names of RD and your reactions are really welcome in the comment section below. Follow us on various social media platforms, Rokan Media, and we will put on the conversation to the next level. I'm out. See you later tomorrow when the game is being played.